Hi, I'm Dave, and right now, believe it or not, I am being productive. You might be asking yourself, how could I possibly be productive while I'm sitting here with my morning tea, watching a couple of scopes like it's Saturday morning cartoons? And the reason is, right now I'm hunting for an anomaly that I think exists in my system. I've got a circuit running, and I think there is a trace, or there's a signal under which it will not pop all the way up to its logic high. Okay, so the first step when looking for something like this is often to just look at the scope and make sure that it's getting something reasonable. You might want to capture uh, unexpected trace, and sitting here watching with it on untriggered roll or on normal under certain trigger conditions to get one time where it messes up and you can get an idea of what's going on. And I'm going to look at this situation at both my TDS 2024B and the MDO 3104. We're going to take a look at how the triggering of this new scope is helpful in these situations where you think there's something going on that's weird, you're not totally sure and you want to get a better look. Let's take a look at the circuit that we're going to be examining today. This is a board that Tech sent me in order to look at the MDO oscilloscope and give it a good, uh, good rating. So we can only take this with a grain of salt. However, I think that this rare anomaly feature is something that happens often in designing circuits. What happens is there's a signal train of maybe three pulses where every now and again I think like once a second or maybe a little bit more often than that one of the pulse trains doesn't quite reach up to its full five volt and I'll show you what that looks like on the scope in a minute but this is the board we're using um, this is not a real clients board so um, I can't say this is a real problem that I've faced but it is very similar to some of the things that I've seen in the past let's see what the scope show in keeping with the rest of the review videos that I've been taking, we're going to be looking at both the TDS 2024B on the left and the MDO 3104 on the right. And we have on the screen the good signal that the MDO demo board is putting out. It's got the three pulses, and uh, so far, after sitting back and watching, I haven't seen a single instance of the runt anomaly, as it's called, the signal that doesn't come all the way up to the top. There are, are a few ways that the MDO can capture it, but before we go into that, let's take a look at the TDS and what it can do to pick up something like this. I was glad that I'm using a TDS 2024B because it has a feature called Persist, which overlays one trace over the other. It's a little bit different than how the MDO does it, but um, it allows you to see a lot of traces all at once. So what you do is you go into Display and you take Persist and you turn it on to infinite. And you can see that the line is getting a little bit blurrier. Um, it's starting to kind of fatten up, I guess, because it's seeing more and more traces getting laid on top of it time and time again. And you can switch this to dots as well, which will have the same effect where it'll thicken over time because it's saving, uh, it's saving more and more data to the screen. Unfortunately, I know because I've seen it on the MDO that there is a runt signal that should be right here and it's not showing up with this sample at all. I don't see a single instance of the runt signal. That's kind of concerning because the whole point of this persist thing is that you can see when something is not right or when there's, uh, when there's an outcome that's unexpected. Uh, I guess maybe you can see that there is one trace here but there should be something popping up here and there's not. Let's maybe adjust this a little bit. Maybe it's just because of the the way things are. And I'm not seeing anything pop up in terms of an unexpected signal. Um, yeah, I guess that's disappointing that this is ineffective at picking up the situation right now where it uses this persist feature, but um, if I was to look at this, I wouldn't think there was a problem, and I'd probably continue on. Um, yeah, no, that's not too good. Well, let's, let's take a look at what the MDO can do. Now, the MDO being a higher grade scope is obviously going to have a few more features that make it nicer for finding weird signals. By going to Acquire, and you get a fast act on for this, 
and we're gonna say oops say waveform display persistence is on and then the persistence time I'm gonna increase to infinity let's put this back further to the left here we go okay now you can see on the screen that there is the red is like that happens all the time the yellow it happens sometimes and the blue is like it'll happen once or twice so we have a blue trace here that cuts down early and kind of jags up and then there's one right here that doesn't quite make it all the way up that's not quite right hmm so uh, we have this situation where we want to get a closer look at that particular signal so persistence helps you find something that maybe you otherwise wouldn't find um, and quickly do it and what did that take like five seconds and then the next thing is they have more trigger features than older scopes would have okay now that I've got fast acquisition off and persistence off let's try and find that signal that's been giving us the trouble uh, so we're gonna go trigger menu and instead of trigger on an edge we're gonna trigger on something called a runt and we can set here the high threshold and the low threshold what that's saying is anything that's going to it's going to trigger if it passes through there not above the high but above the low great so we can see here's our nasty signal but it's a little bit off so let's center it wow okay there we are so we see that the not only did we capture this one but at the same time we're seeing this anomalous dip to go back to the edge and show what it was before that's the good signal and then we can zero back in on this runt signal and see this is the bad signal now again I like to bring up that this is a Tektronix design board and basically a manufactured textbook problem so that they can show off the features of their scope but it's easy to see how the persist feature is able to allow you to see if there's anything weird happening uh, and then depending on what is going on you could pick up uh, for instance using this runt feature to capture the strange waveform and get it every time now I do want to mention that if this runt signal right here was occurring at a different instance than this strange anomalous dip then uh, while we would be able to capture this the triggering on this MDO is not clever enough to get this kind of uh, signal well maybe I guess we could use the runt and zero it in on this area right here but um, on a falling a negative falling slope and zero in on this runt signal but it's really tough to capture um, something that is more based in time domain than than voltage domain the other thing that's really fun about the persist thing that I don't have any equipment to show with it now but you can do things like eye diagrams on USB and capture when maybe once in a thousand there's something that happens like this and you can capture it you can see it um, and you can start going down that path the name of the game with oscilloscopes is seeing signals and uh, this feature really helps out with that and there you have it thanks to these extra features that the MDO has I was able to quickly find the nasty signal uh, characterize it look at it and I've got my feet back on the floor I'm looking at the problem and I'm working on solving it uh, now I always like to say when there's new measurement features or there's new uh, ways of visualizing signals uh, there is a level of confidence that the engineer gains and it's important to take that with a certain level of humility it's important that uh, you don't present this new scope feature or this new finding that the scope has provided as the God spoken truth sometimes it will lead you down a weird path now you can be more confident than if you were working with uh, an older scope or an analog scope or something like that but always remember uh, your measurement is not perfect ever 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 so uh, don't walk into a meeting all cocky think you've got it figured out when reality uh, you might be seeing a when there's a B and C problems to be dealt with okay so I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the two different scopes how the new features are useful and can really help out an engineer when trying to find something that's not normal or something unusual that's occurring in the system I hope you stay tuned for the next one that I put up about the MDO and uh, in the meantime check out the article thanks so much